Hi guys and welcome back to Shadowrun Returns Dragonfall. If you'll remember last time, we got back to the Kreis Bazaar, spoke to our fixer and quote unquote landlord. Uh, how he's got the cheek to charge us money for that dump, I have no idea. Anyway, we got back and we're currently chasing down the details of a man called Green Winters. Or Winter's Green, I forget. One or the other. Something like that. Uh, details aren't important. Don't worry about the details. Uh, we spoke to our, our contact in the, the soy calf over here. And I got myself some fancy new threads. Look at me now. He says. There we go. Look at that. It's... It's a little bit tribal for my liking, I think. Not quite the uh, suave, debonair style that I was going for. It looks mostly like I've skinned some kind of ostrich and stuck its feathers on my back. Uh, and apparently, I could not afford full-length trousers. So, shorts with a way ahead. Less material, cheaper. Worked out fine. So... Uh, whilst we're waiting for our contact in the soy calf to bring back all the details on this Green Winters guy, I'm going to explore around the Croix Bazaar and we've got a, a couple of data taps to put in. And we find out who these people are. A pair of round eyes peer up at you from under the hood of a grime smeared winter coat. You recognise him as David. One of the Koi Bazaar's street kids. If you had to guess, you'd place him in his mid-teens. Though it's difficult to tell beneath the grime and acne marring his face. <laughs> How do you indicate someone's a teen? Give him acne, obviously. You've seen him following Monica around between runs, chasing her heels like a lost puppy. Aww, unrequited love. She had a soft spot for him. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hi to you. Runzy pants. Have you seen Monica around? I've been looking all over for her. Um, yeah, I've got some bad news for you, kid. She's very much dead. <laughs> it was hor It was horrible. There was blood everywhere. I don't, I, that was probably not the best response I could have picked, but I don't really want to talk to some snotty-nosed, acne-ridden fucking teenager. Damn, kids. I dealt with that pretty quickly. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, some kind of dancer. Um... Tip the dancer? Nope. Get out of here. Doing your funky up and down dancing. Looks a little cool. Ah, is that? I believe that is the same dance as the... Is it the Night Elf? Or the Blood Elf? I think it's the Night Elf in uh, in World of Warcraft. They don't pay you five new yen for ripping off some other game's dance. Get out of here. Absolutely, everyone's a beggar around here. Everyone's a beggar. Okay, what else have we got? Uh, some graffiti around here. Bit of anarchy. Bit of anarchy. It's not very well kept, this place, is it? Uh, right, who are these people? Let's talk to you. you. You look like a big unit. What have you got to say? Lane. Before you stands a troll... Though it is a stretch to say he is standing at all. His great mass is barely held upright by two vintage prosthetic legs, along with a crutch under one arm. His body clicks and hums with every shift of his weight. Despite these disabilities, his eyes are sharp and calculating. I know you. Uh, if you know Monica. Sure, I know Monica. You want hers there? Um, I'm Runzy Pants, by the way. Couldn't meet you, Renzi Pants. 
My name's Alexi Lane. Uh, what do you do here, Mr. Lane? He can grow mostly, and try not to be a bother. Oh, fair enough. Uh, there's probably something you should know about Monica. Uh, something has very much happened to her. It was written all over your face. I had a feeling. Besides, Monica al almost always comes around after a run to check on everybody. She's long overdue. Now you're here in her place. So she's either severely wounded or outright dead. Uh, I'm afraid she's gone. Ah, oh dear, that's a shame. She was a hell of a runner. I'll leave you to it, my friend. Maybe we shall uh, commiserate together. Ooh! Uh, oh no, that's where we came from. Yeah, the import shop. That's where we came for. Don't need to worry about that so much. Uh, let's have a nosy up here. Who have we got to... Anyone interesting? There's someone over you. We'll get around to you in a minute. Uh, who are you, kid? Talk to you. Simmy! God, she doesn't look well, does she? Uh, warming herself in the dim light of a dying street lamp is a waif of a girl who looks far too worn for her years. Well, yeah. Yeah, she pretty much looks like that. The clothes she wears suggest the oldest profession. And the fog in her eyes suggests a habit that demands such a line of work. Oh, brilliant. The mother superior says she there will be seven for me to care for, and I need to see them. Uh, <laughs> I was not aware of a convent or a church. She's there when I close my eyes. And I'm and I'm Maria. She says I it's for sound of music. It is the sound of music. Hills are alive with the sound of music. Yep, there's a chipjack poking out. Uh, she's a, a better-than-life junkie. Basically, in the Shadowrun world, uh, there are drugs. There are drugs. But one of the drugs you can take is essentially living your favourite movie. Uh, it's called Better Than Life. Uh, so it's somewhere lost. It's very easy for people to become addicted because obviously they play as their favourite hero in uh, in their movie. So not a good way to go. Pretty serious uh, addiction. This story sounds familiar. Yeah, Captain Von Trapp. Yeah, I I should probably stop talking about that. Uh, no, she's not one of the sisters. There we go. You remember Monica. Come on. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore, sweetheart. <laughs> she's very much dead. Uh, <laughs> just so. Yep. She's fucking croaked it. <laughs> very glib. Very, very glib. My character. Not one for uh, mincing his words. Runsy Pants tells it how it is. Okay, grips her head with claw-like hands, tugging on her hair as she might pull her brain out for a skull. No, you can't switch it off, you're a junkie. Yeah, she's... She's too far gone. This girl is in her own fancy lab. There's nothing we can do with her. She's well out of it. Okay, well, uh, goodbye, farewell, I'll be just saying goodbye. I wish you well, you pumped up junkie ho She is all, by the way. Uh, right, what do we got here? Uh, statue? Bizarre monument towers before you. At the top of a pedestal? The form of an angel stands, its outstretched wings looming over a small park. But the material is strange and uneven, giving the statue a cold Frankenstein-esque appearance. It appears that the artist has welded this monument together from various metal scraps and pieces of junk. Art, ladies and gentlemen. Take it or leave it. As you approach, a small grimy monitor at the base of the statue flickers dimly to life and the grainy face of a smug young orc. Appears on screen. Smug bastard. 
Herbert Kunzo, the creator. What would you like to know? Uh, statue name? Tribute to victory. The victory of anarchy. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Typical artsy nonsense. Uh, it's the monument to the hubris of the Prussian state. Oh, very clever, isn't it? Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Get a job, you hippie bum. Art my ass. Okay, phone's ringing. Let's answer the phone. Let's see what happens here. Hello? It's an obsolete phone booth. Which is ringing. Hello? A monotone, pitch-adjusted voice begins speaking almost immediately. The shock. Shockwell and Leiter's contact for this Kais is no more. Runzy Pants is listed as follow-up contact. This is our only secured line to this Kais. Please, please excuse me. I've said this before, but please do excuse my German. Uh, please listen to the following instructions carefully if you are a supporter of our cause. Okay. We have phone booths in strategic locations throughout the city. Within each one, you may find a request posted for specific information. If you can obtain a copy of this information, return here and submit it via the port below the receiver. We will verify the authenticity of the information. All right, so here we go. This is a line on side quests, basically. And it looks like some... It looks like some kind of anarchist... Hacker... Decker group uh, looking for a free flow of information. Uh, line silent, but there's no one there. So hang up the receiver. And there's another one of our data taps here. So let's tap into that. I've now been reset. Someone there. Dante's still with me. Come on, Dante. Who's a good boy? Come on, Dante. Uh, so yeah, that looks like we've got a an interesting little line of side quests. That's going to be good. Uh, can we get up this way? Is there anything up there? No, we can't get up that way. Doesn't look like there's anything of interest anyway. Uh, what else have we got? Um, oh, there's the last one. There's the last data tap. Let's get that. As you are resetting the data tap, you notice that someone has duct taped a small homemade receiver to the system. An earplug dangles from the receiver. Well, it would be rude just to leave it there, wouldn't it? The sound of heavy machinery makes it difficult to hear the words that are being spoken. After a moment, you find out that you can make out two distinct voices. A nasal woman, who sounds like a heavy smoker, that's my nasal voice, <laughs> and a man who speaks in a high-pitched Breathy tone. That's just my voice then. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Just heard Monica. Uh, Monica is dead and we need to verify. I'm guessing that's what they're saying. Oh, okay. So these are, these are clearly some kind of protagonist. Because they seem quite pleased that she's dead. Whoever these people are. Uh, some more background noise going on. Uh, what's the next step? Uh, isn't ready to move. Gonna have to see who steps out. Oh, that's clearly going to be a runzy pants. Uh, could be someone more amicable to our cause. Maybe? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, this could be interesting. I wonder if you're going to get a choice. Whether to oppose these guys or whether to, to help them. Or if that's even going to be a thing. Yeah. Oh, there's a telephone. 
out of plastic. Uh, nasal woman's voice can be heard again in a sing-song tone. Guten Tag! Oh, guten Tag! How may I help you? That's the way to do it. <laughs> Fucking punch and Judy. Uh, bit of silence. Yeah, I heard. Yes, he knows. Obviously talking about Monica. Okay, so the council. I wonder who this council is. They're obviously divided, whoever they are. Hmm, some interesting developments. Monica seems to have been caught up in a whole lot more than she was letting on. Uh, oh, right, here's the street doc. Dr. Xavier is Ezekiel. As you approach the elf, you notice that he is mid-conversation. His lips move rapidly and his voice comes out in low quiet. He is a very good looking doctor. I will give him that. He's got that rugged look about him. Yeah, whoa. Whoa. I say. I don't normally roll that way, but Christ, you are good looking, sir. Can you make me that good looking? Uh, I'm going to listen in on his conversation. Uh, doing your best to look uninterested. You lean in slightly and strain your ears. Hello. Is this a private conversation? Or can anyone listen? Let's listen in. Uh, oh, he's obviously talking to you. Someone about some kind of surgery or cyberware. May I have got the money. Uh, welcome to the Triage Cyber Clinic. I'm Xavier Ezkabel. Ezkabel, let's uh, shake your hands. Pleased to meet you, Renzi Pants. What can I do for you today? I need medical supplies. What have we got? I've got uh, basic med kit, trauma kit. I'm actually going to save my money. I don't need cyberware. I don't think there's there's anything there. But at least I know there's a dock here. So if I do need things, I can come back to him. Uh, looking for some magic mine frame. Yes, I am. What magic have you got? Uh, he's clearly seen better days, weathered and emaciated. As though he's been stretched to... Alright, this... <laughs> yeah, track marks up the crook of his... Not quite the magic I was looking for, unfortunately. Uh, bugged out eyes. Broad smile. Uh, yeah. You here for some magic? Are you a street mage? I don't think you are. No, you don't look like a street mage to me, my friend. Bag of pills. Uh, I'm not a street mage, but I've got magic in my blood and magic in these bags. Uh, interesting, but let's talk about something else. What else would you like to talk about? What's up with the bandages on your hand? Zap snorts out his short burst of laughter and waggles his bandaged hands in front of you. Oh, these, nothing much, Charmer. Nothing much. Tussled with a spirit back in Amsterdam, you know? We elves are very spiritual people. Uh, well, obviously there's an option there. I'm not a... an elf, so I can't follow that, unfortunately. That's a shame. That would be interesting to see what that led us down. Uh, so you fought a spirit with your bare hands. Uh, did I say fought? Zack winks at you, his smile twisting up into a licentious smirk. You can't help noticing that his eyelashes appear to be dusted with glitter. <laughs> Air motion. That sort of elf are you, my friend? 
Got names for people like you.